suspicion is that novel COVID-19, otherwise known as coronavirus, was in fact engineered in the United States in a biological warfare laboratory at Fort Detrick, Maryland. And it was then targeting China because the Americans regard China as an enemy, as indeed they regard many countries as enemies like Iran and Russia. And uh, talking of Iran, I also think that the American military deliberately sent the virus to Iran, which is why Iran is suffering so badly from it and one of the early victims of this uh, 21st century plague. Given the fact that for years I have believed, and now I think there is plenty of evidence to show it, that HIV AIDS was also manufactured at Fort Detrick, Maryland, USA, back in the mid-1970s. It was originally planted in Africa in the late 70s. And like with all things, you know, human, it, go, it goes wrong. It doesn't just hit uh, the, the uh, target that was intended. This is a disease which is not controllable and can come back and bite you on the ass. And that's exactly what happened with AIDS. So although AIDS was manufactured to hit blacks in Africa and to attack gays, and therefore it was disseminated in the gay communities in the United States, which was a very stupid thing to be doing in uh, San Francisco, New York and Los Angeles. Again, it came back because you can't control something like that. And so we see history repeating itself again. You know, the Americans thinking that they can create this weapon and it will just hit those that you want to hit. No, it, can't, it won't. And so now it's come back and it's become a plague for the whole world. And everyone is suffering because of the United States megalomania and imperial ambitions. You know, it's a very strange coincidence, is it not? The first case of uh, coronavirus in China was the 17th of November. A month previous to that, surprise, surprise, in the United States, John Hopkins University, together with the Bill Gates Foundation and various other people, put together a game, a simulation of a pandemic, whereby they predicted that 65 million people would die at the end of the plague's ravages. And this simulation occurred on October 18th of last year. And a month later, what do we see? The interesting thing about this um, simulation was that they pretended that uh, the plague would start in Brazil from pig farms and then it was spread out. And that was just a red herring. That was just to divert our attention. Because in actual fact, it would start at Fort Detrick, Maryland, where it would be created. And it would be spread, sent to China, Iran, South Korea. But the point of it going to South Korea is so that it will enter North Korea. That would be the, the aim. And of course, we know nothing about what's happening in the North in North Korea, though I suspect there is probably a terrible uh, epidemic going on there. So that's what I'm saying. I am completely backing the Chinese in their accusations 
regarding the United States military being responsible for the coronavirus plague. It began in healthy looking pigs months, perhaps years ago. A new coronavirus spread silently within herds. Gradually, farmers started getting sick. Infected people got a respiratory illness with symptoms ranging from mild flu-like signs to severe pneumonia. The sickest required intensive care. Many died. At first, the spread was limited to those with close contacts, healthcare personnel, co-workers, and families. But now, it's spreading rapidly throughout local communities. International travel has turned local epidemics into a pandemic spanning the globe. One of these days, one of these epidemic events will be a pandemic, a fast-moving pandemic. And mitigating risk and impact of that pandemic will require an all-hands-on-deck approach. And we know from past responses that public-private cooperation will be essential. We're at the start of what's looking like it will be a severe pandemic. And there are problems emerging that can only be solved by global business and governments working together. Experts agree unless it is quickly controlled, it could lead to a severe pandemic, an outbreak that circles the globe and affects people everywhere. We could be looking at double the number of cases in one week and 16 times as many in a month if we are not able to stop the spread. That would be on the order of half a million cases and it would continue to rise exponentially. In three months, we could be approaching 10 million cases. We have known about caps-like viruses in animals and people for decades, but have not been successful at developing a licensed vaccine. And sure, there are new technologies that may help but it's going to be difficult. I am not optimistic about having a vaccine in time to be relevant during this pandemic. How should governments, business, and international organizations allocate and distribute pandemic antivirals and medical supplies to the people who need them most? People are avoiding public spaces out of fear of infection and in compliance with public health recommendations. This has had a dramatic effect on the retail and service sectors. Businesses of all kinds are struggling to operate, let alone provide basic services as their workers have fallen sick or refused to come to work. How should national leaders, businesses and international organizations balance the risk of worsening disease that would be caused by the continued movement of people around the world against the risks of profound economic consequence of travel and trade bans. Common sense says it shouldn't be controversial to suggest a response should prioritize both lives and livelihoods. Absolutely, we need to save lives. We all know someone who's been affected by caps. But we literally cannot afford a heavy-handed response that suffocates our economy. Pragmatism is a wise choice. Countries are reacting in different ways as to how best to manage the overwhelming amounts of dis- and misinformation circulating over the Internet. In some cases, limited Internet shutdowns are being implemented to quell panic. The outcome of the CAPS pandemic in Event 201 was catastrophic. 65 million people died in the first 18 months. The outbreak was small at first and initially seemed controllable, but then it started spreading in densely crowded and impoverished neighborhoods of megacities. From that point on, the spread of the disease was explosive. Within six months, cases were occurring in nearly every country. Meat was in a free fall. The GDP down 11 percent. Stock markets around the world plummeted between 20 and 40 percent and headed into a downward cycle of fear and low expectation. Businesses were not borrowing. Banks were not lending. Everyone was just hoping to hunker down and weather the storm. Economists say the economic turmoil caused by such a pandemic will last for years, perhaps a decade. 
the societal impacts, the loss of faith in government, the distrust of news, and the breakdown of social cohesion could last even longer. We have to ask, did this need to be so bad? Are there things we could have done in the five to 10 years leading up to the pandemic that would have lessened the catastrophic consequences? We believe the answer is yes. So are we as a global community now finally ready to do the hard work needed to prepare for the next pandemic? It cannot be a coincidence that a month after the John Hopkins simulation event of October 18, 2019, that the first report of the coronavirus pandemic is made in China. The question is, why would the USA deliberately attack China with such a biological weapon? First, America fears the huge population of China. The economic and industrial power of a communist enemy. And secondly, the US resents being so massively in debt to China and knows that if China were to call in the debt, America would be brought to its knees with bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. 